If you like the video or any other content on the channel, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. All right, so this is the third video in the series going over the new Custodes Codex. So this is going over the shield host attachment, and this is going to be an overview as well as a list, just to give you guys a little example of a list and just some ideas of how this detachment works. So let's go over the shield host. Since you are Custodes, you do have access to the army rule, Marshal Kata. We did lose the minus one to hit Kata, but now you can select this per unit instead of army wide, so that is a little bit of a bonus there. At the start of the fight phase, each Adeptus Custodes unit with the Marshal Kata ability can select either Dakatari stance for sustained hits or Rendak stance for lethal hits. And this only works in the melee phase and you can pick this in your opponent's fight phase or your fight phase. So it's in the fight phase. And then the shield host detachment rule, Martial Mastery. Once per battle round, at the start of the battle round, you can use Martial Mastery, which lasts until the start of the next battle round. And you can only use this if you have the Martial Kata ability. So this will exclude your Psychana units. The first part of it is each time an Adeptus Custodes unit makes a melee attack on modified hit rolls of fives are critical hits. Improve the AP of melee weapons by your Adeptus Custodes units with the Martial Kata ability by one. So this can shoot your damage through the roof, but you have to use it at the beginning of the battle round. So if you go second, your opponent can kind of play with it. They can move away if you pop it because they know you're going to go into your big damage turn. You might as well move away from you. But if you go turn one, it's a lot more beneficial for you because then you can pop it when you can feel it. Maybe you can catch your enemy in a lot more melee situations. Now we'll go over the enhancements. So for the first two, we have from the Hall of Armories. This one is 25 points and it's shield captain model only. Add one to the strength and damage characteristics of the bear's melee weapons. And this is a great way to add a little extra threat to your shield captain. And I do like this one. Then we have Castellan's Mark. And it is 30 points. And once again, shield captain model only. And after both players have deployed and rolled for their first turn, select up to two custodies units in your army, excluding Psychonic units. That's the most, a lot of these stratagems do exclude your Psychonic units, so it kind of pushes you not to take a lot of sisters in this detachment. This one is after you selected those two units, you can redeploy those units. And when doing so, you can put these units in a strategic reserve regardless of how many units are already in reserve. Very useful if you're bringing tanks or to help threaten a first turn charge from your blade champion. And then you can redeploy to safety if you go turn two or even to redeploy for being a little more aggressive if you go turn one, because this one is one of the ones that you can actually redeploy after you know who's going first. Probably one of the better enhancements in this detachment. For our last two of the enhancements, we have the Orc Mantle, and this one is 15 points, and you can actually put this on a Shield Captain or a Blade Champion model, and it's just add two to the Bear's Wounds characteristics. So this is another useful enhancement, especially if you don't have the points for Castellan's Mark. You can make a Terminator Captain even harder to kill, a literal rock with the turn all damage to one for a turn once per game, so this with Arcane Genetic and Alchemy and your battle tactic just to give him a decent protection from the mortal wounds, make him a big tanky fella. Like I said, this is only if you really don't have the points for Castellan's Mark, because Castellan's Mark is pretty good. Then the last enhancement is Panopta Specs, and this one's pretty cheap, five points, and it goes on your Shield Captain or your Blade Champion model. And this one is, while your bear is leading a unit, range attacks made by that unit ignore cover. I love this enhancement on a big brick of Terminators with all their shooting and combine it with the Archaeotech Munition Stratagem. You can really put out some hurt with these guys. If you can try to fit Castellan's Mark on there with your Terminator Captain, it's probably better for your redeploys. But if you don't have the points to get Castellan's Mark or any of the other more expensive enhancements, this one does do fine, especially on your Terminator Captain with a big brick of Alars. Now we'll move on to the stratagems for the Shield Host. So for the first one, we have Arcane Genetic Alchemy. It may sound familiar. It is now only one CP. It is a battle tactic, so you can use it with your shield captain. Just after mortal wounds have been allocated to an Adeptus Custodes model from your army, excluding Psychana units, so a lot of these stratagems, like I said, are excluding Psychana units, that one Adeptus Custodes unit until the end of the phase, that unit gains a four funeral pain against mortal wounds. And this is the only battle tactic in this detachment, 
and luckily it does target the model's unit so you can use it for free. It's useful against grenades, tank shock and a few of those other abilities that can put out some mortal wounds. It's also nice that you can wait till they are actually allocated on you to use it. You don't have to pop it just to hopefully stop some maybe mortal wounds. You can make wait till you take a bunch of mortal wounds and then pop it. It's useful for that, but it would be much better if it was a protection against devastating wounds. Hopefully we get that change in the future, but for now, we'll just have to use it as it is. The next one is Avenge the Fallen. This one is one CP, a strategic ploy, and you can use this in the start of the fight phase. And the target for this one is your one Adeptus Custodes unit from your army that is below starting strength. Until the end of the phase, add one to the melee attacks of the models in that unit. If you're below half strength, add two. This stratagem hasn't changed from the index. It wasn't very useful in the index and it remains very situational. One CP is very rarely worth just a few extra attacks you're going to get. If you really need to kill something, yes, you might want to use it. I probably myself would just save the CP. The next set of the stratagems we have on Wavering Sentinels. It is 1 CP and it is a strategic ploy. You can use this in the fight phase just after an enemy unit has selected its targets. 1 Adeptus Custodius unit excluding Psychona units. So once again, you can't use this with your sister's units. That unit is in range of an objective and has been selected by some attacks. Until the end of the phase, each time a melee attack is made against that unit, minus one from the hit roll. So essentially, if you control the objective, you can use minus one hit, so you can get your old Kata back. This stratagem is kind of the ultimate feels bad for the detachment. This stratagem used to give you fights first, which I admit was pretty punishing towards melee armies. It was hard for them to charge us because we could just pop fight first and kill them for the most part. But it was replaced by the Kata that we used to have for free. So we used to be able to use minus one to hit for free. You didn't have to be on objective. You could just use it in the fight phase. Now you have to be on objective that you control and it's one CP. So it is useful, but it's just kind of feels bad because you used to be able to use it for free anywhere in the, your army. So now it's just you can only use it on objective you control. And then the next strategy we have multi potentiality for one CP strategic ploy. This one's pretty good. So in your movement phase, one Adeptus Custodes unit that has fell back this phase until the end of the turn, that unit can shoot and charge in a turn it fell back. So this is a very powerful stratagem. It allows us to fall back and re-engage, giving us fights first again, but we aren't as tough anymore. It's harder for us to tank these big charges. So I think as we get a little more defensively strong, as we get buffs down the road, this stratagem is only going to be able to get stronger and stronger as you're able to tank charges. Right now you kind of have to be a little cagey and try not to take a bunch of big charges, but I think this can be pretty strong with Warden. You can pop your fort feeling of pain in the combat phase and then next turn fall back and charge with the Warden. So it does help Wardens quite a bit. And then there is some play with this. You can fall back and charge into some other units if you need to. So a great stratagem. Lots of things you can do with it. Quite happy with this one. For the last two strategies we have Vigilance Eternal and this is 1 CP, a strategic ploy in your movement phase. 1 Adeptus Custodes battle line from your army excluding Psychona units within range of an objective marker you control. That marker remains on your control until your opponent controls it at the start or end of any turn, aka its sticky objective. This is a great stratagem that is sadly tied to only one unit in the whole codex for this detachment and there's no protection against devastating wounds, not a lot of lists have Custodian Guard in them. You are going to have your Custodian Guard Draxis unit probably, but still, you're going to have a lot less access to the stratagem since you can only use it on Custodian Guard. It's an odd change from the index to the Codex. I would probably restrict it to only infantry. And then finally, we have Archaeotech Munitions. I do like this one. It's 1 CP, a war gear stratagem in your shooting phase. One Adeptus Custodius unit from your army, excluding sisters of course, that has not shot this phase, then you can select either sustained or lethal hits, and until the end of the phase, your ranged weapons equipped by those models in that unit have the selected ability. A great stratagem to use on your big brick of Allura's Terminators or Sagittarum or maybe even your maybe Hurricane Bolter bikes or something. And this adds a little extra punch into hordes or a little extra punch into those vehicles. And I do like using it on the Terminators. The Terminators have so many attacks, lethal or sustained, you should be able to get a little extra damage, if not a lot of extra damage if you roll hot. I do like this stratagem. It's one of my favorite ones in the attachment, just because it gives us a little more punch in our shooting. 
and that's the stratagem. So let's move on to the list. And this is the shield host detachment list that I used against the Necrons in the upcoming battle report. It's 2,000 points exactly. For my characters, I have a blade champion, a shield captain, and a Lyris terminator, and he has the Panopto Specs enhancement, and he is my warlord. I just gave him the guardian spear, and I, of course, have Draxus. Battle line is just four custodian guard, three with spears, and one with the Vexil and the shield. For my other data sheets, I have five Terminators with spears. They're going to be joining the Terminator Captain. Five Wardens with spears, one with the Vexilla. They're going to be joining the Blade Champion. Two groups of three Venatari, all with lances. And then two groups of three Virtus Praetors with the Salvo Launchers. And then rounding it off, I have four Prosecutors for standing on my home objective. So let's move on to some more details about the actual list. Like all my lists, I have my job categories, primary, so I have the primary, and these are units used to gain and hold objectives just to gain as much primary points as possible. My secondary units, I use these for secondary scoring and just disrupting the scoring potential of the opponent's army. And then finally, I have my attack units, and these units are used to target the opponent's most dangerous damage dealers, as well as target their opponent's primary scoring units, just to try to take away their opponent's damage and their scoring potential. The primary units I have for this detachment, I have the Blade Champion with the Auric Mantle, so the plus two to his wounds, with the five wardens. And this is the toughest unit in my list. I use it to hold on to the objective that I'm going to feel that's going to take the most firepower throughout the game. The enhancement helps keep the Blade Champion around a bit longer and helps protect him against some precision attacks with the extra two wounds that he's going to have. The next unit is Draxus with the Four Custodian Guard. This is a great unit for putting out some good damage to your opponent's infantry units and holding on to a less threatening objective, especially if it's further back to get more use of that 18-inch loan op ability that she has. As long as you roll a 2-up in the command phase. I've rolled so many 1s that I can't even believe. It's, it's ridiculous. Then we have the Prosecutors. So the Prosecutors are the last primary holding unit in my list. And these just hold on to my home objective. They're very cheap, very, especially for the Custodies. For my Secondary. So the Secondary in this list is admittedly kind of weaker. I do have these bikes. They are quite a bit expensive for running around doing Secondary scoring. But they are very good for disrupting the opponent scoring. I was really trying to get as most damage I could get out of these martial mastery turns, get a bunch of lance in my list. These guys probably aren't the best for running around doing secondary scoring. Finally, I have the attack units for this list. So I wanted some hard hitting melee units as well as some units I could reliably get into the melee phase, especially during that martial mastery turn. So I do have the shield captain with the five Alaris Terminators, and these are the hardest hitting melee unit in my list with some great potential shooting. Their ability to re-roll wounds against monster vehicles or character units allows them to hunt down the opponent's most biggest and important units. And the Golden Light allows me to kind of deal with one threat and then pick them up at the end of the opponent's turn and drop them down the board. Especially with the change, they go into strategic reserves instead of coming back down immediately the next turn. You can hold on to them if you need to and just wait for another threat to appear. I usually put these in deep strike just so I have that big rapid ingress threat. And then we have the two units of the three Venatari. And these units also start in Deep Strike just because they have that Rapid Ingress for free ability. The Rapid Ingress and the movement speed allowed me to get these units to where they need to be when they need to be. When you pop that Martial Mastery turn, you don't want your opponent to fall back and not, then you not be able to get into melee range. These guys allow me to get into melee range whenever I need them to be. These guys did do quite well in the game that I used them. I still feel they're a bit overcosted for what they do. I think 3 for 180 would be perfect, but for now, 200, they work pretty good in Shield Host. They're a good, good unit for smashing in during the Martial Mastery. You get those exploding fives, the AP3 on them, you have Lance on them, so a lot of times you're wounding stuff on twos. It does some pretty big damage. I would probably take more of these and then the Virtus Praetors next time. They're cheaper and they just have a lot more kind of utility. Let's go over, okay, so let's go over the final thoughts of this detachment. The list I built was around doing as much damage in the martial master turns possible. I had a lot of rapid ingress and speedy units to make sure I could get into melee when I need to be. The strategies felt familiar but weaker at the same time because some of them actually are. Some of the changes, like the change to you being only be able to stick your objective with a battle line unit and you only have the custodian guard in the entire codex as a battle line unit. 
makes it kind of weird. And then the loss to the defensive side, I felt the most in this detachment. Yes, it was against the Necrons, who are pretty tough, but I also fought the Orc Champions into the Necrons. And this one, it felt like maybe it was because I had a lot of infantry. It felt a lot more squishy as I was trying to get the board into melee. I would maybe get into melee and then have to worry about a lot more of the counterattack this time. And yes, Index Custodies was a little boring, run up, stand on objective do what you do but with this martial mastery to trying to push you into melee getting you pushing you into trying doing some big damage the lack of defensive stratagems and abilities is really felt in this detachment and then the shield host doesn't really feel like it has the an identity all the stratagems targets non-psychonic units so it feels like you should be a tanky big scary one turn melee detachment you have no sisters really you just have a lot of custodian big tough custodian guard but I had the least fun with this detachment, oddly enough. Uh, I still enjoyed the game. It was a great game, still really a lot of fun. Close game, possibly because this was Index and now it's Shield Host Detachment from the Codex. It might felt a little bit stale. Do know this army quite well and I played a lot. Maybe I felt the changes the most to this detachment. But I just kind of felt like it was real stale. Like it was just, you didn't really know what I was trying to do. I do, I wanted to try to set up this martial mastery, but I also wanted to make sure I didn't get nuked off the board. Talon's detachment, I felt I have a little more caginess with the movement and some of the fallback and charge one. The orc champions, you really feel like you kind of have to have rely on your characters. All the detach, all the stratagems target characters. But this one kind of feels a bit weird. But I do like the enhancements. The enhancements are fantastic. And like I say about all the other detachments about this codex, hopefully in the future we get some changes to our defensive, we get some changes to some of the detachment rules and such, and some of the stratagems possibly, just how they target and who they target. I do think this could be a really fun detachment, especially with that golden wild turn. Like, it's super fun when it does go off, so maybe some other tweaks to this attachment could make it super fun. Like, I do have hope for this codex. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be around when hopefully they get fixed. I'll be around here playing my salamanders, and we'll be here, guys. We'll be we'll show you a lot more of the list of what I've been cooking. I have some more ideas. I have an RTT coming up on the May 18th, so I do have a couple lists that I am going to be trying on the channel, and also I'll show you guys some of the ideas I have for hopefully placing in this tournament higher than bottom. Like I always say, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by.